Hello. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Explore Your Future. Tonight's theme, of course, is Pathways to Post-Secondary Education. Uh, I'm not the face that you're used to seeing here. Um, our Executive Director, Scott Verhoofy, is off uh, celebrating a life milestone. Um, so I'll be your MC tonight. My name is James Howe. I'm the Program and Communications Manager at BEP Waterloo Region, where we make every day career day for youth across Waterloo Region. We want to acknowledge that we are broadcasting from the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Neutral people. We honor and respect the First Peoples of Canada and strive to learn from their example. Tonight, we wish to thank our sponsors who have made this series possible, including our lead sponsor, Toyota Motor Manufacturing of Canada, Sonova Canada, the region of Waterloo, the Workforce Planning Board of Waterloo, Wellington, and Dufferin, and the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Programs of the Waterloo Region and Waterloo Catholic District School Board. The goal of our Explore the Future series is to help young people in Waterloo Region and their families to better understand the career opportunities that are available to them, set goals, and determine the pathways to achieve them. Tonight's session features three current and recent students from each of our three local post-secondary institutions. They'll each share their personal stories about how they made their choices of what to do after high school and what post-secondary education has been like for them. To give you a sense of how you might make some of your decisions and what to expect when you get there. For privacy reasons, uh, your video and audio will remain off, but you can type questions into the Q&A um, for our panel. And we will, I will read as many of them as possible um, and have the panel answer them. So without any further ado, I'd like uh, our panel to join me on camera so I can introduce them. Okay, we have with us um, Ian Kamara. He's a graduate from Laurier. He graduated in the fall of 2021 from the Law and Society program. Uh, we also have Garnet Cable. He's a uh, third year student in electronic systems engineering at Conestoga. And we also have with us Anna Smith. She's a fourth year student in health sciences at Waterloo, the University of Waterloo, of course. So uh, we also have with us tonight, uh, they, they will be the three panelists who will share their personal stories, but we also have some special guests, uh, staff from the post secondary education um, who will be here to help answer questions that are uh, beyond the scope and experience of our students um, uh, so that you can get a full range of answers on things that may be of interest to you. We have uh, from Conestoga, uh, Alicia Rivard. Uh, we have from the University of Waterloo, Jay Smith. Um, and from Laurier, <laughs> we have Ian Kamara, who is uh, doing double duty tonight. Ian also, uh, now that he's a graduate, uh, works at Laurier uh, and helps with recruitment matters. So he uh, will be able to answer your questions from that perspective too. Um, and we will um, be sending out an email at the end of uh, tonight too. Um, and it will have links to all the uh, potential future student uh, parts of the websites. Um, so if you don't have, uh, get all your questions answered, hopefully um, 
those websites will be able to help you out and connect you to people like we have here tonight. Okay, so um, you can start typing questions in the Q&A at any time, but we won't be uh, asking anybody to answer them until uh, our panelists have finished. Um, although the recruitment staff will also be answering some questions in writing in the Q&A, um, if it's uh, very specific to uh, their institution or to uh, your personal situation. But we do want to try to cover as much as we can here live so that everybody gets the, uh, the benefit of uh, the information that we're sharing. So um, let me just quickly switch to speaker view. And uh, what we want to do now is to welcome uh, Ian to uh, for his opening remarks and share his story. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is Ian Tamara, and as it was said, I am a recent graduate from Wilfrid Laurier University. I studied on the Brantford campus, and I took the Law and Society program, and I minored in criminology and human rights. Now. This was not the program that I personally was interested in in high school. However, well, I wouldn't say not interested. It wasn't my first choice. I, in high school, I really struggled to decide what I wanted to do for my career. And I know that is a huge problem among high school students, grade 11, grade 12 students, because you don't know, honestly, what you want to do when you grow up. I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. I'm sure your parents don't know what they want to do when they grow up. So it's just a huge constant problem. So I probably applied to five or six different universities for probably about 12 programs in total. Didn't hear back, was waiting, was getting very paranoid. But I relaxed, offers came back, and it was all good. So I decided to do the Law Society program at the Brantford campus of Laurier because as much as I was interested in so many different things, I really wanted to get involved in the law in any way possible. So with that being said, Laurier has many different options that you can get into when you get to the university. But I didn't know that when I was applying. So my recommendation, do your research, 100% do your research. There were so many things going on in my life in high school that I really wasn't academically focused at the time. And looking back now, I think if I changed my ways, I could have done so much better in high school to get to where I wanted to be. And right now, I couldn't have asked for a better university experience, better university option, nothing. I could not have asked for anything better. I'm very happy with how my university experience went and where that took me in my life right now. So going from high school to university was sort of a huge, sort of brain stopping moment <laughs> because I didn't know how to react. I didn't, it was the first time I was living away from home. It was just so overwhelming, but most universities and colleges and post-secondary institutions have the supports that you need to get you to where you need to be, to make you successful, to support you. And that's what I found going all through university, all through my four years of university that I was supported and that you don't ever not feel supported in your academics. So that's sort of, how I felt coming into university. During my entire university experience, there were a lot of ups and downs, but I am so very thankful for everything 
that I got involved in. I had on-campus jobs. I had on-campus volunteering opportunities. I had an off-campus job. The possibilities were endless and they are endless. And you just have to search through wherever, talk to your friends about things and volunteer and make the university experience the best possible experience that you could ever have. But with that being said, you also have to focus on your academics, which as I alluded to earlier, it's the reason why you're there. So finding all of these different sort of pathways through the university or college or wherever you decide to go will make your experience there so much better and so worth whatever struggles you're facing right now. So that's a little bit about me and my experience through high, through high school and into university. So I'm very excited to answer all of your questions and I think that's about it for me. Thank you very much, Ian. Um, we would love to hear from uh, Garnet now. Hey, well, hello. Uh, of course, I've been introduced, but I'm Garnet. Uh, thank you for being one of the few people who got my name right <laughs> um, on the first try. And uh, yeah, so uh, actually, can I share my screen to for during this talk? I just have a few. Anyway, I'll start. Um, it's fine. Anyway, uh, so my experience, I'm going to focus more on the academic journey than the personal journey. Um, so I started out in high school, same sort of deal. I had not, like, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. And that was, I've always been kind of inclined towards electronics and programming and that sort of thing. Um, but, but when I was in like grade 11 in high school, I didn't actually know what, program to go into yet until I took a computer engineering course and I was like oh working with hardware is kind of cool and around the same time I joined a first robotics team and that was like oh well working with electrical stuff that making like things move is kind of cool um so the grade 12 rolled around I'd had some experience building stuff and I decided well I want to go somewhere where I could build stuff and around that time I there was an open house for Conestoga and if you get a chance I highly recommend you go to one uh for any school actually and it was like oh Conestoga so it's like a university degree but you get to do more hands-on stuff which for a lot of people like me is a very uh you know a very enticing option and so I like, so backtracking a bit that through high school, like I got my first interaction with programming through Minecraft, that computer engineering course taught me actual programming. Um, and then I got my first interaction with hardware uh, just over the summers while I was in high school. And when I finally got to Conestoga, I was like, oh, so this isn't the stereotypical oh you're in post-secondary and nobody cares about you anymore that everyone tells you for your whole life it's more of like a you kind of get the feel for what you want to do and there's a whole heap of supports if I sound kind of rambly it's because uh I'm not a public speaker and there's quite a big crowd sorry um so uh, I'm going to backtrack again to the important thing, which is how did I actually end up at Conestoga instead of another school that offers a similar program? I could have gone to Waterloo or Laurier or Fanshawe or any school, really. Um, so same deal, actually, as our previous panelist. I applied to all the schools. And by all the schools, I mean the maximum they would allow you to. I applied to, I believe it's you get four colleges and three universities without paying extra. And I heard back from all the colleges immediately and none of the universities and if you're a high school student uh some of you may be in grade 12 i'm not sure but uh when you don't hear back from the universities it's kind of like an, it, it hits your ego because you kind of feel like oh am i not a smart person well the answer is no you just might have a skill set that's not suited to the university style of teaching which is something that I tell people who come to open houses. 
because at Conestoga, the approach is very much you, you, you're someone who wants to do things, whereas at university, it's you're someone who is more towards just the thinking part. Um, so I got accepted actually first round into Conestoga into all three programs I applied to there. And I went, well, I'm going to go to electronics. And I've now spent most of my time talking about that. So I'm going to actually, I actually have a thing. If you see on my video, I build things now. And that's just from going from, I went from someone who only knew how to do programming in Minecraft to I just build things at college. And this isn't as animated as my normal speech I give to people. But uh, to wrap up, I just want to say, if you are like trying to just wondering what you want to do, um, it is just really a matter of look at the programs that are offered in the area and talk to people like us panelists or professors because it, it's really just what feels right. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Garnet. Um, I'm sure we'll have some follow-up questions for you. Um, uh, we would like to invite Anna now to uh, share her story. Thanks, James. All right, so I guess I'll kind of split my story into three sections before university starting and then kind of throughout university. Um, so like you said, my name is Anna Smith. Uh, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm in the health sciences co-op program here at the University of Waterloo. I'm also doing a minor in social development studies. So I guess going all the way back five years ago to kind of when I was like still in um, high school, I was somebody that started looking at universities like fairly early. I was, you know, someone that thought I knew what I wanted to do with my life. And I really wanted to work backwards to be like, okay, if this is my goal career wise, these are the steps that I need to take. This is the program that I need to do in university. These are the courses that I need to take. And so I thought that I definitely had it all figured out. I knew what my dream school was and my dream program. Um, I knew that I was interested in pursuing a career in medicine and hopes that one day I would become a pediatrician. Um, so any chance that I got within high school, I took that to learn more about different universities. I went to as many university fairs that I could, um, just like, you know, talk to older students. Uh, my sister, who was a year older, she would go on university tours and I would just tag along for the ride because I was like, I just want to learn more. Um, and then by the time I was in my grade 12 year, um, my school had a career fair. At that point, I had gone to so many universities and thought that I knew everything that was out there. So I was like, you know what? I haven't really sat in on a University of Waterloo presentation. I really, at the time, did not want to go at all. But I was like, all my friends are going to this presentation. Let me sit in. So I sat in. At the end of presentation, I still, you know, wasn't 100% sold, but my older sister, who was a year older at that time, went to Laurier. So I, you know, had visited the city of Waterloo and kind of knew a little bit uh, more about what it was about. Um, and then when it came time to applying, a little bit different from Ian's experience, but I only applied to two schools and I applied to kind of the same programs at both schools, um, kind of both a health science program and then life science because at the time I was like, medicine is my goal. Um, choosing where I wanted to go after I got my acceptances was definitely pretty difficult as I really felt as if this was the be all end all and the choice that I at that point would really define my life. Um, let me tell you, it does not. <laughs> um, and I'll get to that kind of at the end. So starting university, it was definitely a transition. And I'm going to be so honest, at the beginning, I did not like university. I didn't like my program. Um, I just wasn't a fan. I wasn't living on residence either. So I think definitely also kind of, you know, played a factor factor to that transition because I felt like I was missing out on a lot. Um, it was a lot harder to meet people. Um, and yeah, so that was kind of like my first couple of months in university. I guess kind of the reason why I decided to choose health science was because I thought that it was a good mix of life science and public health because global health was my backup if I didn't get into med school. So first semester really was not a fan, did not like it. And then now we go into second semester of my first year and there was a huge transformation. I met so many more people and I really started to actually enjoy my courses a lot more. I decided to stick through it and I'm so glad that I did. 
did. Um, kind of throughout university, I've really been able to love my program and I've been able to kind of add different minors and specializations onto my degree to kind of tailor it and make it what I want it to be. Um, I love my time here at the University of Waterloo, the community that I've made. I've gotten to be involved both on campus and off campus. And even though I didn't live in residence in first year, um, in my final year, I'm actually living on residence. And you see my background as a residence life dawn. And so helping to support first year students with their transition, um, the program I absolutely love. And I feel like I've definitely learned a lot more um, kind of within the field of health science and public health. And now I've definitely kind of shaped what I want to do career wise. And I really credit that to the program that I chose and the opportunities that I got here through co-op. I've been able to gain two years of paid work experience and I was able to uh, do an international co-op in Uganda. And I feel like I wouldn't have been able to get those experiences if I had gone to another institution. So I have really enjoyed my time here. Um, and then I would say the biggest takeaways or tips that I can have uh, for everybody watching is that your plans can change and that's okay. Um, open yourself up to kind of learning more. Um, I feel like that's something that I helped, you know, I thought that I had, I knew what I wanted to do, um, but kind of through learning more, gaining new opportunities and learning more about myself, um, I've been able to kind of broaden my horizons. And so just be open to change and know that you don't have to have it all figured out. Everybody here, you are all so young. I'm still so young. And I know Ian mentioned this too. Um, but, you know, there's always time to like change and go down a different avenue. So this is an important decision, but don't stress out about it because, you know, you can change your mind, you can change your program and, and that's OK. Um, so, yeah, that is a little bit about me. Um, and I'm glad that everybody here is here today to uh, uh, hear more and I'm happy to answer any questions. OK, if everybody uh, could come back on uh, video, our panel and special guests, uh, we can move into the question and answer session. First, I'd like to uh, thank Ian Garnett and Anna for sharing their stories. There's lots of good information there and you can already sort of see the the variety of, uh, of paths that people took in their decision-making. And uh, I think that's one of the things to learn tonight is that there's not just one single way and that what you think is going to happen uh, is may not happen at all. So, or, or, you know, there may be a few twists and turns around along the way. Um, one question I've seen a couple times in the, the Q&A, and, um, and if you have any more, please uh, type them in, is kind of uh, what do you uh, plan to do? What kind of job uh, are you hoping to have after you've um, finish your program or um, shortly thereafter. So um, would somebody like to answer that? I can start right. with that. Um, so for me, uh, so my program, of course, is based on electronics. You can think like basic, anything circuitry that an end user wouldn't normally interact with. So my end goal is I want to get my professional engineer or designation and start my own engineering firm. Uh, but the interim of that is I'm planning on going to just work for a company that does like industrial automation designs, uh, control systems and that sort of thing, um, because it's a good application of both the software and hardware aspects of the program. Anna or Ian, do you want to show your career aspirations? Yeah, so I am graduating uh, this year and I've applied to two postgrad programs. So I've applied to a master's of public health as well as a physician assistant program. Um, and so I'm deciding to continue my education. I feel like I'm not done quite yet, but hoping to get kind of in the field of working with um, marginalized populations and increasing the access they have to healthcare services. Okay, great. Thank you. And Ian's yeah. probably in his dream job already, right? No, uh, I mean, you could say that, but <laughs> um, right now, um, I'm actually taking a little break from school. I would like to go back. I would like to get a master's degree and potentially, if all things go well, fingers crossed, go to law school and become a lawyer, which is one of my dream jobs. So <laughs> that is what my sort of plans are for the next few years. Hey, um, this might be a, more of a question for uh, our staff guests. 
Um, someone's wondering if uh, taking co-op in high school um, is good for getting, I, I assume, getting into a university co-op program. I'll start, I saw the mute there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, at the University of Waterloo, at least, um, uh, we wouldn't take in a co-op mark as part of admission requirements, as part of the top six courses we would need to see when making admissions. However, we do know that students who take co-op uh, in high school, it is something that you can put on your, what we call the admission information form, but other institutions will have a, a similar name to that. And it's kind of where you get to brag about yourself more than just your marks. And so if you are, uh, if you did take co-op, you can let us know about that on the AIF, and we would take that into consideration. And if you are planning to go into a co-op program once you get to university or an internship or uh, whatever it might be, those are often things that you can start putting on your resume right away and give yourself a, a step up on uh, people who maybe don't have that background. So uh, yeah, doing co-op, it's not going to disadvantage you in any way. And if you can make it work, um, although we won't look at your mark, it could help set you up for, uh, for future opportunities. Anybody else care to answer? I was just going to say, Jay, you answered that. You hit the nail on the head <laughs> with that. Um, when it comes to uh, Conestoga or any of the colleges out there, we don't look at co-op grades. Um, the one thing I say, because I, I have over 14 years in career development, and all I can say is that co-op in high school is so important to help you decide on the path you want to take. So no matter, no matter what you're looking at, whether you're looking at applying to college or university, don't worry if that's going to help you get into the school. Make sure that that's what you want to do to make sure you know the path you want to take. I've talked to so many students in high school who uh, took co-op to go into, say, vet clan, to be a vet or a doctor or a mechanic, and they realized doing co-op that that wasn't the path they wanted. So it really is helpful. But even if you take that path or you don't, it's so good on your resume, and it gives you a network of people. So co-op in high school and in college and university is fantastic. In fact, a lot of our students who take co-op at college get hired by the employers. So it is just such a great journey and path for you. I don't know, Ian, if you want to touch on anything. Honestly, we, Lori, is the exact same as the University of Waterloo and Conestoga. We don't look at co-op marks either, but if you would like to mention it, it's good to know if you want to get into a co-op placement in university. Now, I, I will give a little plug here on uh, um, February 23rd, we actually have our next Explore Your Future session is going to focus on um, the benefits of co-op education in high school and also a specialist high skill major. And so uh, if you're interested in the benefits of either of those programs, um, come back in two weeks, uh, registration is open. Um, there's a, oh, I lost my next question. Um, okay, here it is. Um, for all the panel, what's your biggest piece of advice for high school students who need to choose high school courses as is happening pretty much right now for everybody? Um, and, and those choices are supposed to uh, kind of um, guide their, uh, choices for post-secondary education. Um, what, how, how do you do that if you don't have any idea uh, what you want to do in post-secondary uh, education or, or in life? But maybe that rings a bell for somebody. Uh. Um, I guess I can take this one. Um, so at Laurier, my recommendation is to make sure if you are planning to go into the university stream, to make sure that you take your 4U grade 12 English. That is the one thing that all universities are looking for. At Laurier, we have a minimum average of, or minimum grade average of 60% for every program, however, that does change depending on program. That is just the minimum requirement for to get into Laurier. But if you don't know what you want to do in high school, I would just say take classes in high school that are either the U level or the M level that is of interest to you. Take something that you're interested in, apply to a program that you're interested in because more often than not, you will do so much better if 
you study something that you love. I'm not sure if anyone else has anything to say, but that is just my personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, I know yeah. for uh, picking courses, if you don't know what you want to do, uh, if anybody's ever heard the, if you're planning on not dropping French, you should take academic French instead of the applied. I'd say that applies to all courses. If you don't know what you're going to do, take the har take the harder courses, because if you drop down to college level courses, you can't, like, it's a lot harder to get back up to university level than it is to adapt. Uh, the exception would be uh, college level writing is very different from university level writing, but in my opinion, it's still better to have the university courses if you're not sure which school system you're going into. Uh, it also has the added benefit if you came to a school like Conestoga, which is a college that gives out degrees, you do actually need the university level courses. I'll add in really quickly, just keep in mind that uh, like you're obviously on the right track right now coming to events like this and planning ahead and hearing reps like us when we come and visit your school or do virtual presentations, but uh, know that you'll never be locked into one program. Yes, it can be difficult to switch from maybe one program into another, but you have academic advisors and you've got professors uh, and instructors who can work with you. But if you're ever in a program that you don't enjoy, you will not need to stick with that. Um, it's easy to swap in, or in some cases to swap into another program, uh, but even to another institution, whether it's into another university or a college, it's much easier to do that now in Ontario. So just keep that in mind. It is a big decision. Uh, put a lot of research into it. So you're making the best decision at this point, but you're going to learn a lot about yourself once you get to, uh, to campus. So you're not going to be locked in. Just keep that in mind. And I was just going to add a little bit to what Jay was saying. When you're looking at going into post-secondary, I'm going to be honest with all of you. I didn't think I'd go to post-secondary. Uh, I thought I would just finish high school and find a job. I switched my program three times in, at the University of Guelph, and I couldn't find a job when I was done. So I did a postgraduate at the College in Human Resources. So again, I just wanted to get out of Sault Ste. Marie. So I applied to three schools that didn't have zoology. I applied to zoology, so because Algoma University doesn't have that. Um, but what I like to always tell students, when you're looking uh, at any kind of program, because the question was more again about you know not knowing what you want to do, and I know at high school you have my blueprint, but when I taught career planning, I always told students to go onto Google and look up Holland's Code and Myers Briggs. And Holland's Code is going to ask you a bunch of questions about skills. So it'll say, "I like to work with tools," and on a scale of one to five, one being no, five being oh yes, that's like I love it then you choose that. And then at the end, it will give you an idea of which category you're in and what jobs would match. And Myers-Briggs is a personality one. So it's gonna ask you um, different questions. I like talking, in the, I like speaking in public. I have an easy time meeting people. And then at the end, it's gonna tell you what kind of personality type you are. And then it gives you jobs that match that. So there's a lot of things that you can do to kind of really get a better understanding of maybe what fields you might wanna go into. And then my best advice is if you're not sure what you want to do, and I, I have a boy in grade 10 right now, I said, take English, math, chemistry, biology, and if you can, take physics, because those five you need for a lot of different programs. So those are your five core classes that you typically would need, whether you're applying to university or college. Hey, good advice. I think my daughter in grade 10 is taking those courses next year, so... <laughs> Okay, um, another question um, is more on what to expect uh, when you go to away to school, especially, but it could apply even uh, if you're staying at home. Um, how do you uh, make new friends and make new connections? Um, and uh, even what about, uh, you know, living arrangements, uh, that kind of thing? What um, so those are uh, some, some, some big potential changes there. And any advice? I can take this one. Um, so I would definitely say if you have the opportunity, living on residence is such a great way to 
make you friends. These are people who are kind of come in the same boat as you moving away from home for most people for the first time. Um, they're trying to navigate the challenges that come with university in terms of academics and just kind of like finding out who they are as people. And so it's kind of nice to be in an environment where everybody's kind of going through the same things. And then in residence, you're going to have supports um, such as your RAs or your DONs that are going to help to plan and facilitate events to help you make friends. Um, I would also say the other thing is um, once you're settled within university, um, trying to participate in any extracurriculars. So this way you're going to be able to meet people who kind of enjoy or have like a similar interest to you. So for example, I joined Cabaret in my first year. So that was kind of like a musical theater club. So everybody there was super interested in musical theater. So we had that common connection as well as all being students. So it was super easy to kind of make friends through that. So just trying to find ways, you know, either within residence or within other clubs on campus was definitely a way that I found uh, that I made uh, a lot of my friends as well as in classes too. Uh, Garnet, Irene, do you have any suggestions about how to kind of make some new connections, friends, that kind of thing uh, at university or college? Yeah, um, I yeah. would, sorry, I would say um, try and get involved as much as you can on campus, no matter what institution you go to, you will always be able to make connections and make new friends and just have a really good university or college experience if you get involved on campus by making those connections, by making those friends, join a club, join a sports team, anything that you can think of. I would highly recommend doing anything to get involved because that will make your experience so much better. Uh so I didn't have to deal with living away from home. I'm still with my parents. But in terms of creating like connections with people, um, this might be a little overkill for your average student, but I actually became an executive on the Engineering Society is how I've built up my connections at Conestoga. Um, and that's basically, most schools will have some form of student union, whether they will hire students or not varies, engineering societies will uh, take applications, but that's an experience because I went from just participating in events to actually running them. Um, and then for the more like person to person level, uh, Conestoga has very small cohorts. Uh, I think my program tops out at 20 people. So um, we like getting to know 20 people who you see every day as I did in first year was quite easy. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Um, a question more for our uh, uh, staff guests. Um, it's how do you um, people, uh, I guess mostly high school students, learn about um, a university's, it says career seminars, but I, I assume um, the question really means about uh, seminars about universities and, and colleges. How 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 do uh, especially maybe if you're in grade twelve, you may have probably been through this. But if you're a younger student, uh, how how what should they be looking for? I'm wondering um, in this case. Uh, so if you want to learn more about universities, I think Ian mentioned it uh, going for tours and open houses. Uh, so all of our institutions will offer those. And those are especially great once you get into your senior years. Once you have a program or programs in mind, you can learn a little bit more, make a little bit of a road trip, go with some friends, compare, see what, uh, what each of them offer. Um, if you are still trying to explore maybe more careers and uh, what you maybe even want to apply to, then if you're not in high school yet, you will have a careers class in grade 10, which will definitely get you started. Your guidance counselor's office is a great resource there and teachers. Um, but I also recommend the students start thinking about what are you really inter interested in and also what sorts of things do you not want to do? If you're someone who does not enjoy physics, then why, why go into a physics course and then into a career that's really going to involve physics? You don't have to. There are other careers. 
um, and start to think about what sorts of problems you want to solve instead of a specific job. Because once you get to university or college, um, you are going to find that there are a lot of careers out there that you didn't even know existed. There's a lot of programs uh, that you didn't even know exist. Um, I just learned recently, a professor told us that uh, when it comes to health related professions, how many could I name? I could probably do about 25, 30, 40 if I really tried. Uh, but there's actually 1,100 distinct health related professions out there. So if you know that you want to help people and get into health, you can start with that. And then uh, you've got lots of time to work towards a career. But uh, yeah, otherwise, I would say start looking into universities, think about if you want to move away from home, stay, um, uh, stay closer to where you are, what sort of programs you want to get into, and then start visiting campuses, or our reps will go to you, we have different fairs, um, you can get brochures, all kinds of things like that, and your guidance counselor is going to be a big help with that. And I was going to say, um, I know with us at the college, we have um, every week, twice a week, we have different connect sessions that tell you about different program areas. Like I did one yesterday for health sciences. Uh, so there's a lot of events that we have. And it's just simply, even if you type into Google, events at Conestoga College and or events at University of Waterloo or Laurier, it will pop up in there. Um, I know my, our campus and probably, no, I can't say for sure Waterloo and Laurier, but I'm sure you guys do. We have virtual tours. So even though you can't be on campus to do the tours right now, we do have virtual tours. And like Jay said, um, when things kind of go back to normal, hopefully, there's always career fairs. So even joining something like this today, you will learn a lot more. But just visit the websites, peruse through, look at everything. Uh, that's going to really help. And when you're on most websites, there's usually a link or an email to us recruiters. And so we can help answer questions as you go. And even if it's something you say you email me and you say, I'm looking at a specific program and we don't offer it, I will give you the pathways. And I know the other in institutions do the same thing. So there's always people to ask questions and we're always there to help. Okay. Um, I think it's time for uh, a new question. Um, just let me check where it happened to it. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I guess the, the well, the there was a question about scholarships, um, and that's uh, I, I know that's as a parent, uh, you know, parents are probably wondering about the expenses of post secondary education, um. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, certain people may be more interested in uh, scholarship or bursaries. Um, how, uh, I guess, can anybody give us any advice on, on uh, how best to proceed to get some financial assistance? So, I mean, I, I have the website already uh, copied to put into the chat. But when you're looking at Conestoga, for example, we do have a section that has awards, scholarships, and bursaries. But in on the website too, it does talk about OSAP. So remember OSAP, uh, it, it all depends on your family income. So if your family income makes too much, you won't get OSAP. But there's a lot of different options out there. And it's not just at the specific institutions that have scholarships, awards, and bursaries. We also have, you can also go on to websites um, like Scholarship Ontario and things like that, where they have multiple scholarships that people don't apply to. And you can get so many different scholarships and awards that could pay for your entire education. So I always like to tell students to be aware of that. The other thing that people don't know is that there is a student line of credit and the student line of credit you can borrow, but your parents have to co-sign. And usually it's about 4% interest, but that doesn't actually apply until after you graduate. Typically with a line of credit, they apply 7% interest the second you borrow. So there's a lot of options for you out there. Just, it, I know with Conestog, we have all the information on our website and I'm sure with Laurier and Waterloo too. However, just it's just taking a little gander at the website, but I will post that into the question that you did ask for Conestog anyway. Yeah, um, at Laurier, we have probably about seven different types of um, bursaries and scholarships. The most, the one that people are mo most interested in are the entrance scholarships. So that's where you're automatically um, enrolled or considered for a scholarship if this is your first time applying to a 
Canadian University or an Ontario University. And then that is all based on your uh, GPA in your grade 12 year. And depending on your what your GPA is, is the amount of money maxing out at $4,000. But it all depends, again, just like Conestoga and I'm assuming University of Waterloo, all of the information on that is on our website and I can also post that into the chat. Yeah, correct. Waterloo is, is right on with that too. Um, based on your admission grades, the majority, like almost all of our scholarships, you don't need to actually apply to, they're considered automatically. Um, and if the few that do have an application, we have a database that you can go through and we often email our applicants about those. But again, going to bring it back to uh, checking with your guidance office, um, local organizations. Uh, if you have a part-time job, checking with your employer. Uh, parents' employers often have some sort of scholarship available. And then there are some external uh, websites that are great to check out too, not affiliated with any one institution, but can often be used at those institutions. So the two that come to mind are scholarshipscanada.com and yconic.com. I know a lot of students... Uh, university and college bound, check those out for scholarship opportunities as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, uh, any uh, um, links that you have uh, are probably, uh, well, I guess they can go into the chat. Okay. Um, there's uh, some people that are already uh, looking ahead uh, um, looking for uh, travel opportunities or study abroad opportunities uh, when they're um, at doing post-secondary education. Um, are there uh, those sorts of opportunities with our, our local schools? Um, is that something that uh, people should be taking into consideration in terms of picking programs or anything like that? Um, yeah, so in terms of uh, you know, traveling abroad. We do have international exchange firms here at Waterloo, and I know the other schools definitely probably have those as well, and they can speak to them. Um, I definitely had an international experience that was with co-op. So at Waterloo, you can do an international exchange opportunity um, where you go and do a semester abroad at a partner university. You're able to take courses from them, and it's also just a great way to experience a new culture. Or you can do that through um, our co-op program. We do have international co-ops and so that's a really nice way to kind of go another place and work. I decided to do an international or international co-op instead of an international exchange just because I really liked the idea of working in a different country and it definitely was um, a super easy process and the schools have a lot of supports to kind of help guide and navigate students through that. I was able to kind of work through the co-op department as well as my employer to, you know, go through the process of, you know, getting a plane ticket or if there were any visas that were necessary or vaccinations. So all of that, um, the schools definitely provided a lot of support. But Jay, if you have anything more about international exchange or? You got it, Anna. Uh, Ian or uh, um, we don't have a lot, we don't have a lot of um, exchange programs. We do for some, like we are bachelor of international business administration. There is the option of doing that. Uh, we do get a lot of international students that come to our school. We have some that have done that through hospitality as well. They're not as extensive as some of the as, as some of the universities, but there are some options if that's something that you are looking at. You just have to pick the right program for that. Yeah, at Lori, we also have an international exchange program. Um, we have about 20 different universities across the world, or 20 different countries across the world and 70 different universities that you can choose from. And they, just like the University of Waterloo, you, you can apply whenever into the um, exchange program and it'll they'll take care of you at the international office. But all the information, again, is on the website and you can take a look at that. Okay, great, thank you very much. Um, another question that kind of stuck out to me is, um, what is going to uh, post-secondary education like in a, a time of COVID? I know it's uh, hard to predict uh, 
what next month is going to be like, let alone next year. Um, um, but I'm sure there have been uh, some uh, changes even just over the last two years in terms of the, the responses and, and opportunities and so forth, um, which will hopefully uh, um, continue to, uh, a, a, as we um, move forward, we'll be better prepared to, to handle what may come up. So um, what, what's the university like in these days uh, uh, during a pandemic? Or college for that matter, sorry. <laughs> I have a thing for this. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes. To answer the question. Yeah. Right. Let me make sure I did this right. What is what is college right like during a pandemic? All, all the pictures that should be on screen right now is stuff we did during the pandemic. <laughs> so, it 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 did affect our courses quite a bit, but. You see, this is what I did. I was still in the lab once a week actually working on stuff. <laughs> this, your yeah. mileage may vary from school to school and program to program, uh, but my experience has been the professors and coordinators at Conestoga have done a bang up job making sure we can do as much as we used to do in person as possible without being unsafe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's great to know, especially I'm sure for high school students who have spent a lot of time doing virtual learning, they like to know uh, what's possible. Yeah. <laughs> and anybody um, else have any? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I would definitely say that safety is priority. So all decisions are made just ensuring that like the professor and the teacher safety and the student safety are coming first um, with all decisions that are being made. Um, in terms of schooling, I had a couple of semesters where my schooling was online. So very similar to how you did online schooling in high school. Um, there was kind of like two methods delivery where you had synchronous classes. So it was like you would log on to a lecture the same time as everybody else. And then there was classes that were asynchronous. So professors would kind of post and you kind of did it at your own time. Um, so I think everybody responded to this really differently. I, for one, sometimes really liked the classes because I was able to kind of schedule it around my own time. If I needed to go and run an errand, I didn't have to worry about missing a class because I could just do it, you know, around my schedule. Um, it was definitely an adjustment for sure, um, not being in the in-class environment. But uh, uh, this semester, we've um, kind of went back to in-person as of this week. So I've had a couple of in-person classes this week. So it's kind of been nice to see everybody again. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it's been uh, during COVID. I can just say as a, fact, um, as a support staff, <laughs> uh, it's been very interesting. I can tell you that before COVID hit, I knew how to turn on a computer, um, use my phone. Uh, now I know how to use Zoom and Google Meets and all these platforms and Discord. I mean, I have learned so many platforms that my boys would be very proud of me. And um, I am getting really good at virtual presentations. I do miss in person, but I am becoming a guru at it. So it's, you know, it, it takes a lot. Like someone who's very extroverted like me at the beginning of the pandemic, it was extremely hard because I am so used to talking to people and being out in the community, but I've learned to actually calm and be Zen um, at home, but I've learned so much. And LinkedIn Learning has been a great uh, resource for me as well. So it does impact students, but it even impacts everybody who's involved. But I do feel for the students who, like Anna and Ian and Garnet, who didn't have that option for some of the courses to be in class, especially at the beginning. Like my son, his first year of high school, he was online. So it, it is a challenge. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's always something or some silver lining for you, uh, even if it's to go into the class or a lab um, at your school. And like Anna, going back into school, it's just, it's so nice, right? So you do learn a lot of new skills and then you get to go back to the real world and, and see what it's like all over again. In fact, my son who's in grade 10, he's like, he's taking four classes now. He's not used to that. He's like, I'm so tired by the end of the day. I'm not used to taking four classes. <laughs> and I said, that's high school. <laughs> so you do, you do find ways to cope. <laughs> okay, I, I, we're getting close to the end here. Um, 
I guess uh, a question that I always like, and uh, and I don't think we've quite covered it the way I'm asking it um, yet, is, uh, and this is especially for the panel, um, what advice uh, would you give your grade nine self, uh, I guess, in terms of getting from grade nine to, uh, um, you know, th through post-secondary, uh, what advice would you give yourself? Heavy stump. <laughs> I think for me, I would say to just like take a step back, actually think about what you want to do in your future and don't rush into anything. Actually do research about the different institutions, do research about what programs there are, do research about what you're actually interested in and do some and do study courses and take courses in high school that you're interested in take courses in university or college that you're interested in because if you love what you study you will love your career path you will love the experience of going to post secondary and you'll just overall do so much better if you love what you study. So that's what my advice to grade nine, small little Ian would be. <laughs> okay, thank you. I think that is definitely great advice. Um, i trying to think of something that's not that. I would say, don't stress, have fun. Like, I know that this is like a big decision and obviously like, yes, make sure you do your research because you don't want to get to a point where you're like, wow, I need to switch into a different program. I need to do another program and I didn't prepare. I didn't take the right courses in high school and now I'm not able to. So make sure that you do the research ahead of time. But also university is a fun time and like applying to schools and looking at different schools. It's a fun process and it's going to go by so quickly. So just like enjoy this time enjoy the process of applying and looking up schools and talking with your friends about the different schools that they're applying to because it's so much fun um and so just everything will work out the way that it's supposed to so don't stress out too much and just enjoy enjoy the season of life basically is there uh, advice for grade nine garnet I was just rapidly typing an answer to someone. Um, <laughs> as, as in two people going into grade nine or people who are already in grade nine? <laughs> well, what, what would you tell yourself uh, if you could go back? Um, I would tell myself to not work two jobs, but uh, <laughs> well, that might be for <laughs> going into grade nine, uh, the biggest lie you'll be told in high school is it is not the best four years of your life. And honestly, that's a terrible story to tell people when they're still children. <laughs> your life will be a lot more fun once you get to post-secondary and you're doing like the specific thing you want to do. Um, in my experience, high school was the last four years where I had that mentality of why am I learning this? It's not interesting. Uh, Cause you get to grade, like you start in grade nine, they make you do everything. You get to grade 10, you do a little bit less of everything. And then you get to grade 11 and 12 and you go, okay, I get to do what I want to do now. <laughs> so my advice is keep your grades up and you'll get to do more of the stuff you want to do later in education. Okay. Thanks. Um, do we have uh, sort of last words, closing remarks from uh, Alicia or Jay? I was just going to say about, um, I remember back in high school, um, I might be a lot older now, uh, but I do remember <laughs> high school, I remember post-secondary, and all I can say, um, yes, high school can be a struggle, yes, you worry what people think, um, I actually know some uh, people when they were in high school, everybody loved them, they went to go to school to be a nurse, they got made fun of, there's always things like that that happen, but I'm going to tell you, I absolutely loved going to post-secondary. Yes, I, you know, had schoolwork that interrupted my life. Um, but otherwise, it was a great experience. I met my husband there. I loved the programs I took. So, you know, you have to have that balance of work and study. Just like you do when you get a full-time job, you have to have the balance. But it is probably 
you're going to remember a lot of things in post-secondary and you meet a lot of friends. In fact, most of the friends I have now are from post-secondary. So your journey through there is going to be so much fun. So take advantage of it and enjoy it. Even if you have to take a general arts and science program because you might not know what you wanna do, there's always someone there to help you along. It's so much fun. I'm so excited for you guys to go into post-secondary. And uh, advice for grade nine. So that, that's too far to, to think back to for me, but I would say um, I know there can feel like a lot of pressure when you're in grade nine and then even more in grade 10, a little bit more in grade 11 about um, not only where you're going to go for school, but what career you're going to end up in. You've got lots of time to figure that out. So don't put too much emphasis on that right now. Just try to uh, do well in your courses, pick the classes that uh, you're interested in, but that you think could set you up for what programs you might need to go into. Um, and try to take advantage of all of the clubs, uh, councils, volunteer opportunities that you can get in, a part of as well, and then continue those on uh, into university. And uh, know that when you get to university, it's a place where you can really be yourself. If there are things that you want to do in high school, but you maybe feel like it's not cool to do, or not a lot of people are involved in that, when you get to university or college, you're going to find a ton of other students uh, who have similar interests to you and you can be yourself and get involved in those things. So uh, yeah, think about more than just the academics. Uh, think about uh, what you'd like to do outside of that and what you'd like to keep up um, as well uh, for extracurriculars and know that you really can't go wrong, especially in Ontario, regardless of which university or which college you go to. Uh, we're really, really fortunate here in the province of Ontario with some really great institutions. So um, if you start with that, at least uh, you'll be okay. Great. Hey. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you to everybody, uh, Ian, Garnet, Anna, Jay, and Alicia, for uh, sharing so much uh, great, wonderful information tonight. Um, we are recording this. Uh, we, we don't send it out to people, but it will um, be posted on our uh, YouTube page uh, sometime not too far off. Um, we, we don't like to promise it too soon because uh, uh, we have to do a little bit of editing and so forth. Sometimes, once in a while, we run into a, a, a glitch where uh, it didn't record properly or, or something like that. And unfortunately, sometimes we, we aren't able to provide it. Um, if you are looking for more information about uh, potential paths to post-secondary and career paths, we have a section on our website called Career Profiles. Um, the vast majority of our volunteer career speakers who go into high schools and talk about what they do have shared um, their job description and basically how they got from high school to, to doing that job. Um, so that has a lot of good information that could help you to um, explore uh, what you want to do and, and how to get there. And one thing that you'll find that's very common is uh, life either life happens or you get new information from new experiences um, um, or you just uh, decide to, um, that something's not, not for you and, and you change direction. So uh, all that's very common. And that's one thing that um, at the BEP Waterloo Region, we really want people to understand is that managing your career is an ongoing process starting now in high school, but you're constantly kind of evaluating where you are at, um, taking in new information, uh, setting new goals and moving to, uh, to, to achieve them. Um, now to get the, the most out of